All right, guys, in today's video, we're taking a look at this running Ecotec 1.4 liter turbo sitting inside a 2015 Sonic. And we've got a coolant leak problem. We filled this reservoir up, and we can see it's already gone down to here in one highway drive. And so what we're trying to understand is what's leaking. So if we take a look right down below this upper radiator hose on this side, you can see down here there's a leak, I mean a puddle, where it's been leaking. And if you watch here long enough, you'll see it dripping right from under this hose. And what we're trying to figure out here is, is it the hose or is it this plastic housing that the hose plugs into? Right, so if we come up here with our mirror, we can see that it's all wet around the bottom of the clamp, right? We don't actually see anything dripping from the plastic. It looks all dry. If we take a larger mirror and take a look at it on this side, you can see the dripping right there. You can see the coolant pooling on the bottom of the hose right there and then dropping off. So this looks very much like it's probably the hose leaking, but it's really impossible to tell until you pull it. So we're going to go ahead, shut the engine off, let it cool down, and we're going to pull this hose off. We're going to see if we can determine if it's the hose or the water housing. All right, guys, um, we got this uh, cooled down so that we can get access to this spring clip right here and try to pull this hose and try to see do we have a hose problem, which is pretty simple, or do we have a crack in this plastic water outlet. outlet. So it's in a really awkward spot to get a tool in here because you've got the oil filter positioned right here. So I'm going to just come in here first and see if I can get it repositioned. Compress this guy and twist him a little bit. Now he's been off before because we can see from the witness marks here this clamp has been moved by a previous owner. Maybe they had a different problem with this. So let's just see if we can get this out of the way first. This is going to be a little bit of a Pisser to get it moved initially. All right, once we get it moved a little bit, then we can get a decent tool in here and get it off the rest of the way. At least that's the theory. Now you're going to have some coolant come out. We do have a catch pan right underneath here. This setting here is just not enough to get it open. Let's see if we can get our tool to use the other side. This will be half of our fight here is just getting this off. All right, much, much better. Get this tool out of the way. Get it to release all the way. All right, now we can just work this hose off. And like I said, there's going to be some residual that runs out, so you want to have that catch pan underneath. Make sure we get it all going in there. And for something like this, we don't want to bother draining the whole thing because we don't even know what's broke yet. All right, let's bring this hose up and let's have a look at it. So looking from the inside, don't see anything obvious yet. You know, so she is busted. It's not obvious. What you can sometimes get is you can get the coolant coming through the cords in the hose. And what I'm noticing here is you can see dried up coolant right along each of the cords. 
all around the perimeter. And so what I think we do have is a failure of this hose. Maybe just not in the obvious spot right here at the opening that we thought. So let's get a mirror and let's see if we can detect any cracks in this water outlet so that we can at least eliminate that. Right, guys, so I'm going to come down here and clean up around this housing. I see here like there's a there's been little pieces of rubber strips from the hose, which is again making me think we just have a hose problem here. I can also tell that this water outlet's been replaced in the past because this is an aftermarket one. It is not a GM one, just from the markings that I see on the side. What we're doing here is just trying to get some of the wetness off so we can see if there's any hairline cracks around here because, again, it's only leaking from this nipple, this big nipple here. All right, so hopefully you guys can see this, see with me. So what I'm looking for is any kind of a hairline crack in the nylon. And they'll stand out. I don't see anything anywhere along. Obviously we can see the top and the sides. We don't see anything on this side or the bottom. I don't know if you guys will be able to see on this side. Same thing. No sign of any cracking at all. And then the very bottom, I know you guys can't see because I can barely see. But um, again, no cracking at all. I'll see if I can get just one view that might show up in the camera here. The very bottom, I don't know how good that'll be. But there's no cracks on the bottom either. So I'm prepared to condemn the, fill, the hose rather alone. And as we get it out, we'll be able to know for sure. So to get it out, we need to move this reservoir out of the way. So we got a couple of 10 millimeters attaching it here. And then once we get this kind of lifted out of the way, we'll have another one of these spring clamps at the other end of the hose. So overall, a pretty simple repair if this is all it is. Right, so we can sit that guy like that. You might have to bungee him in place. Take our flashlight and I'll show you what we're after down here. So we can see down here we got another hose. Now we see some residual coolant along the side of the radiator, but we have not seen any evidence of a leak on the radiator. So we could have this hose squirting out at this end as well. So we're going to have to get the hose out to kind of inspect that as well. Our leak has only been... Um, over here running down the transmission housing. We did have this up on ramps to confirm the leak location. So nothing in the front, so this is kind of surprising that we see this residue. We also had an earlier problem with the reservoir leaking, and this just could be some residual left over from that previous repair. Yeah, either way, we'll clean that up and watch it to see if we see something else. But right now, we're going to figure out how we can get access with our tool in here to release this spring clamp. So let me... Um, probably get this guy, this little sensor out of the way. We'll get that down there so we can get access. All right, guys, I'm going to see if I can just get it out with one of these kind of tools. A little spring clamp compressor. Without having to disassemble everything. It's just a really tight, 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 tight fit. I got it, but I can't uh, can't really pull it back much. Let's so get the hose off with just the clamp released. It's a pisser that they put these things on like this. Where you don't have any access. All right, guys, I gave up on this tool a little bit too soon. What I'm going to try and do is see if I can prise the clamp back off enough to remove the hose. It's really just a really tight fit, and I'm not going to take off the battery and everything just to get out a hose clamp. It's ridiculous. So we're able to go back. We just are not able to go twist it. So this is the way we're slowly getting this hose off. Emphasis on slowly. 
as you can see. And we put this back together, we are not going to put this clamp in this orientation because it's just dumb. All right. You can hear it running into our catch pan. For those of you, you know, that might be wondering if that's really working right, you can see right down here. All right, it runs down this line and then drips right onto the bottom plastic, you know, covering and then it runs into the catch pan. So don't fret, nothing's getting down or any little critters can get access to the antifreeze. All right, now we're gonna try to get this tool out of here. And that should release the hose as we just saw. And there, we got it out, I'll say the hard way. Dumped our coolant down in the tank there. All right, so now we've got this out. Let's get this uh, a little bit more out of the way here. What I'm doing is I'm just trying to see, so we don't see the coolant on the nylon pieces here. We only see the coolant residue on the nylon pieces here. I don't see any sign of a broken hose. But I tell you guys, I'm, I'm just convinced that this has to be what the problem is because there's just no other explanation for the, the location of the leak. Yeah, so even though I don't see anything wrong with this hose, it's got to be deeper inside where we can't see it. It just has to be. All right, so let's get cleaned up and let's swap this guy out. All right, guys, I really hate to not be able to find root cause when doing something like this because you don't want to just do a parts cannon deal. So finally looking inside and flexing the pipe, you can see this area here and here that looks kind of like, you know, dry skin. That's where I suspect our cracking has penetrated into the embedded nylon cords of the hose and induced this crack. We've got this all along the interior perimeter of this hose. So I'm very confident now that the hose is the culprit. So let's go ahead and proceed with replacing it. All right, guys, here's our replacement hose. It's going to look identical to the one we're changing out. It's going to be a part number 951-29353. Now this upper radiator hose from the factory has a different number on it, but it's actually not a an orderable number. This is an assembly line number, 9508870, but you can also use that to help identify this. But this is the actual orderable number. And whenever you change one of these out, it's a good practice to put new clamps on it. So we're going to replace those as well with 131-62312. It's basically the same type of spring clamp, but a lot more healthy and a lot more tension on it. So, like I said, we're going to finish cleaning up, and then I'll show you putting this guy in, and then we'll give it a test and see if this was the problem. All right, this is like the uh, biggest AC Delco bag I think I've come across here. It's like almost a garbage bag size. And we've, of course, got the thing is uh, double bag. It's also, I think, the first time I've come across a made in India GM part. GM definitely sources stuff from all over the world. Okay, so there's where our clamp is going to go on the engine side, and there's where our clamp is going to go on the radiator side. Now this marking is what tells the factory where they want to have the clamp um, compressed at. So that's why it's located where it is. We're actually not going to use this because it's too awkward. We're going to shift it over a little bit. Get a couple of our new clamps in the position. One and two, and we're going to pre-position them onto the hose. If I can get the guy to open up enough, there we go. And 
Now GM originally had the flat end facing up, so I guess we'll go ahead and try to maintain that approach. Sit it back here for now. And we'll do the same thing on this end. All right, now let's get it back on where it goes. So we will do the radiator side first. I'll try to find a home for the flashlight for you guys. It's somewhat visible. And we'll run this guy up here. You want to run him up to this notch that's molded into the plastic. And then on this side, just want to make sure he's flush against this piece right here. You can see right there. That's the same kind of notch kind of approach that you got down this side. Just want to make sure he's flush right there. Now comes the hard part of getting the tools in here to reclamp it. So we'll do the engine side first. Spend more time getting these clamps on than doing the actual repair, right? just at the very, very outer end of the travel of the tool, so got to make sure you get it on there. And of course, you got to get it compressed enough where it will actually fit around the nipple. There's one. It looks like he's just a little bit too far to the front. I'll move him back in just a second. All right, right, guys, now over here, we'll be able to move this where we want to get the tool access by hand. And then where can we put the flashlight where it will help you and won't block your view? Maybe there. Come in here with our tool. Fortunately, you know, there's like no way for me not to block your view partially. But, you know, we're just putting a clamp in. It's not rocket science. And the only thing with the clamp is it's going to go in part way, possibly at an angle. So just have a pair of pliers available to kind of push on the bottom. Get it positioned there. It's going to take a couple of tries, guys, just because of how cramped we are here. But we're going to continue pushing this back in there until we get it situated where it needs to go. Unfortunately, i got to, got to go where the camera is for a moment to finish it the rest of the way. So let me do that, and we'll come back. All right, guys, we got this guy centered exactly where he's supposed to be. And then if we take a look at the radiator side, we did not put it in the original position, but we have it exactly centered in the white marks. I don't know if that can come out in the film or not, but it's exactly where it's supposed to be. We've just shifted it up to the top to have easier access for the future. The other thing we've done is we've scraped off that residual dried up coolant from when we repaired the previous leak. And we flushed it all out with clean water, which is exactly what we're going to do up here as well. We want to get all of that coolant washed out 
so that we can tell if we got another leak or not. So last thing we have left is to put these two tens back in. Actually, we got to get it on the... Uh, hold on a second, guys. I didn't catch the little clasp here on this little hinge piece or this little metal piece. Now we can put these in. Now there's a torque value on these, but I don't recommend you use it because the plastic's old. You tighten it down to torque, it can break. I'll put the torque value at the bottom if you want to try it anyway, but I prefer just to use good and tight. All right, so we just snug it up, and now we're ready to add coolant back in here, right? So what we're going to end up having to do to check our work and make sure this was an effective repair is we're going to have to run it back on the highway. You might have to run this through a couple of times until you get all of the air out of the coolant system. But at some point, you'll, you'll know you've gotten that out, and you'll be able to tell if you have any leaks along the way. So we're just going to refill this with some Dexcool, and then we'll give it a test. All right, guys, we're back after our highway drive here. And we've got good news, good news, and bad news. So the first good news is when we take a look uh, in this crevice area, try to see how we can get a shot yeah, right down in here so we can see that that staining that we had on the radiator was just that, just staining. Get a better light through you. So there's no leak there. That was left over from an old leak. And when we take a look at our new hose, we can also see that we've got no leak going on here. Nothing's dripping down anymore. So we fix that. The problem is that we have more than one leak. So we can see down here that we still have some wetness and accumulated coolant. And if we zoom in, we can see that the top of this sensor lead is wet and if we look underneath that sensor with a mirror again this is going to be a hard one to get for you guys but right here we can see that the sensor is wet on the bottom I don't know how well that's coming in for you guys but the bottom line is this water outlet is going to need to be replaced. Now you could probably just swap out the sensor, but since it's aftermarket and we've got that problem and the new water outlet will come with a new sensor, we're just going to swap it all out. When I get that video done, I'll link it in the upper right. But we took care of the first leak with the upper radiator hose, so I hope this helps you out if you've got a similar repair that you need to do. If you found it, it helped you, please take a moment to hit that like button. And as always, thanks for watching.